To create an invoice inside of Wave, we want to come to the Invoices page shown here. To get to this page, you can click the Invoices icon in the left-hand menu. Now, as I mentioned before, invoices are an accrual transaction. This means that the income for the transaction is created at the time the invoice is saved, not necessarily when you receive the cash. This can be a little confusing for entrepreneurs because this means that if you're using invoices, what shows up as income doesn't equate to what's in your bank account. Just because it shows you have a thousand dollars in income doesn't mean you have a thousand dollars in cash in the bank because the cash receipt and the recognition of income are two different transactions that happen at different times. And so your income and your cash will kind of forever be out of sync. That can be a little hard to wrap your head around. We'll show you a little bit more of how to understand that as we get to the reporting section. But just be aware if you decide to use invoices, your income and your cash are going to be a little different. However, that being said, I really feel like it's still important to use invoices, particularly if you're going to make sales and receive payment for those sales at later dates because the invoice is going to allow you to track when a sale is actually made and who owes you money, how much, and how long it's been outstanding. These are important things to keep track of as an entrepreneur and so I think the value of the invoice far outweighs the, com the confusion that it might cause uh, in the beginning as you begin to recognize the difference between accrual income and cash. So. Let's go ahead and jump in and see how to create an invoice inside of Wave. To do that, once we're on this invoices page, we simply click create an invoice here. So this is an add an invoice page. And what we'll want to do is first assign the customer that we're making the sale for. So in this case, I've got this Doe Enterprises that we created earlier. So we'll use them as our customer. Now we need to select what currency this transaction is going to take place in. If you're working in multiple countries, you may have different currencies set up for this particular account. For us, we're just going to use the US dollar. It's our main currency, which is why it popped up first. And it's the only one that this example is going to work in. We need to set up the date. We're just going to leave it as today's date. And Perhaps the customer may have sent you a purchase order requesting your products or services. If they did that, you can attach the purchase order number here for that customer's reference to make it easier for them to understand. Some customers use this, some don't. It's really up to you. It's not a required field. The memo is pre-filled. We set that up when we set up the invoice template earlier. I'm going to leave that where it's at. Now we need to select what product or service this customer is going to purchase. So in this case, I'm going to say it's going to purchase the DVDs that we set up earlier. We're going to give it a quantity of two. They're going to purchase two of them. And it sets up my subtotals and tax for me. The tax section here was actually set up when we set up the item earlier. So if you missed that, jump back and take a look at that. I can, however, override the tax if I want to. I can either click in this field and add additional taxes if they're necessary, or I can click the X next to the name of each of these taxes and simply remove them from the report. Once I've determined what products and services, the pricing and tax for each of those, the invoice is ready to be saved. These are all of the normal required fields. There is one more that I want to show you, though, that is optional but I find really handy, and that's the reminder field. So sometimes clients don't always pay on time, and sometimes that's simply because they forgot. So I actually set a reminder on every single one of my invoices. It's just handy, common practice, and it doesn't allows me to not have to keep track of when an invoice is due or overdue or how far overdue it is before I send reminders. So I can click the add a reminder here and set a reminder for three, seven, or 14 days after the due date. In this case, I think a week's probably good. So I'm gonna set a week. And what it does, if I hit this preview button, it'll show you, it sends kind of like a receipt that just has the bare details of the invoice number, the amount that's still outstanding, just sends that as a little tickler to remind my customers that they need to pay. 
and uh, I found that I get a better response on payment times if I have these constant reminders going out to the customer. So I like using uh, the reminders. So I'm going to leave that where it is. And at this point, we're ready to save this invoice. So I can click Save. I should mention there was that uh, Save as Draft button. And what the Save as Draft button does is it saves the invoice, but it doesn't create the income. It doesn't really finish the invoice. It just allows you to kind of save an invoice that's halfway, that's in progress, but nothing will show up on your financials until you actually click the Save button, not the Save as Draft. If you save it as Draft, it doesn't what we call post to your financials. It doesn't create the income until you actually hit save. So that's important to remember. So now that we've saved this invoice, it shows us a preview of what it's going to look like when the customer gets it. And this is based on the template that we created earlier. And at this point, I could print this if I wanted to, or I could email it to my, my client. I like emailing because it gets there faster. We have confirmation that it arrives. And I find that repayment is faster if I email things than if I mail them because people have their email strapped to their hip. They have it on their phones, their mobile devices, their computers. They're staring at it constantly and so I get a resp better response from email. So for me personally, I email all my invoices and I think that that's a real strength that uh, Wave and most online softwares offer to you is the ability to email out your invoices. So to email them, I click this send button here and you have the option to either send with Wave or send using another web-based email client. I really like sending with Wave. I've had a really good uh, experience with that. The invoices and the emails look really nice and you can select what email you want showing up as the from. So let me show you how that works. If I click save, send with Wave, it shows me the email address that the customer will be uh, receiving it from. I can add additional emails if I want. So maybe the owner wants the invoice sent to them, but they want it CC'd to their accounts payable clerk and you'll get paid faster if they do that. So you may want to have some additional CCs here and that uh, you can add them in the add an email section to the left of uh, the customer's email. We can also send a copy to us. I'm going to go ahead and click that. I like sending a copy to myself because it gives a physical tangible evidence that the email was successfully sent. So if the customer ever comes back and says, I didn't receive it, I have a date timestamp in my own email that says, yes, it was sent on this date to you and I didn't get a rejection. So it helps kind of negotiate issues that might come up and give you some evidence to work with that emails are actually being sent. Uh, the subject's invoice number one from Accounting Lab, that's good enough. When you email this through Wave, it will show the invoice in the body of the email itself. I tend to like that. I feel like um, people pick it up and read it faster without having the attachment. Sometimes, especially with mobile devices, attachments uh, are long to download, kind of tricky. So I just like to throw it in the body. Um, however, if you want to add a PDF attachment, if the customer requests one or whatever, you can click also attach the invoice as PDF down here. So we'll do that for this example and then go ahead and click send takes just a second. And with that, the, e the invoice is done, sent to the customer and received. And we're finished creating our first simple invoice. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other Wave users here on the Accounting Lab.